flames attack the treacherous Chervinia course. If man and his machine in the world four-man bobsled championship, some are claimed by these icy jaws that devour these sleds of steel. Only one will survive to taste the victory. That's all today on NBA. Well, like a raucous trumpet at an American football game, the bell is Europe's call to competition. Bobsledding competition. Now, you may have ridden a roller coaster, but this is something else. The ultimate bump and grind. And listen to the crescendo of vibrating sound. Reaching speeds almost 70 miles per hour now. Don't adjust your set. This is the best video possible on this vibrating sled. In fact, at the halfway mark on the track, our camera momentarily comes out. But our driver, he was perfect all the way through, completing this course in fine style. Around the final curve and into the finish line. The camera is skew. You can see the tilted heads here of our four-man team as they come to a stop. And the cheers of satisfaction. They're driving Ron Dunn, but lots of bobsledding coming up as we bring you the World Four-Man Bobsled Championship from Trevinia, Italy. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Lewis. Welcome to Trevinia, Italy, and to the Arrivo Curve, the last of 17 curves on this World Championship track. Now imagine four men tucked into a rocket-shaped bobsled speeding around this corner at 85 miles per hour. Not here, but 10 feet above my head, on this vertical wall of ice. It seems unbelievable, but there are 14 countries represented here in the 19th World Championships. With a closer look, let's go to the top and my colleague, two-time U.S. Olympic bobsled driver, Paul Lamb. Greg, the weather conditions here at the top of the hill are absolutely perfect, and the track is in great condition. But the big story is the fact that Wolfgang Hoppe, the East German, who won two gold medals in Sarajevo last year, crashed in his last heat of training and has been eliminated from competition. Let's take a look at that crash. Here they are at the halfway point on the course, the fastest part of the course, where this big sled is reaching speeds of up to 85 miles an hour. This is the big right-hand turn that lines him up for the infamous Bianca corner. He's in on time. He's off late. He's on his side, banging all the way down. Watch him bang here. Look at that sled climb up on that wall. Hits the lip, which knocks it back down. The heads bang up against that left-hand wall. They're on their sides. They're through the finish. No one seriously hurt everybody on the sled. This most unforgiving track in Chervinia has claimed the best in the world. Hoppy may not be here, but the East Germans are still favored to win. Driving the number one East German sled will be Bernhard Lehmann. This 36-year-old silver medalist at the Olympics in Sarajevo would sure like to win a gold here. And driving the East German number two sled, Dateliff Richter, the winner of the two and four-man World Cup here last year. If there's anyone that can catch the East Germans in this championship, it'll be the Swiss. And the one driving the number one Swiss sled is Silvio Giobolina. He was the bronze medalist at the Olympic Games in Sarajevo last year. And Joe Bellina is challenging. The East Germans are in the lead after two of four runs down this track, but Joe Bellina only 29 hundredths behind. In third, East German number two, and in fourth, Swiss number two. Let's take a look at the track. Greg, this is a natural ice course. It's one mile in length, has a 450-foot drop, a total of 17 curves, and the big four-man sleds will reach speeds of up to 85 miles an hour on this course. And it's the lower half of the course that is the most demanding, especially the curves of Zura Bianca. As Paul, you recall, you almost flipped there. That's right, Greg, I remember it well, but that was back in 1971, and I was very lucky to pull it out that day. Here, the Soviets in their second run were not quite so lucky. They're in the lower labyrinth, building up steam, taking the big Azura turn, which lines them up for the Bianca turn. He looks perfect going into Bianca, stayed on the turn a little too long, rolled over on his side, and they're on their head the rest of the way down. Every man in that sled is trying desperately to hold on and stay within the cocoon, if you will, of that sled, so that they don't go flying out and really get injured. And all four men did stay within the sled as they went through the finish line, and so they did receive an, an official time. However, they withdrew from the competition. The action just beginning here, We'll be back with more of the four-man Bob World Championship. At the top right now, the driver of the East German number two sled, Dateliff Richter. We remember him well, Paul, winning the two- and four-man competition last year here in the World Cup Bobsledding Championship. Dateliff has a very good starting team. Let's see how they get in that four-man sled as they push off the top of the mountain. The driver is in. Number two man follows him. Three. And a 
Brakeman settles down. The time for the first 50 meters, 5.45. Only five hundredths off the fastest time. East Germans, extremely good pushers. Going through the big Cristallo turn at the top of the mountain. This is where the uh, sleds are going very slowly, picking up speed as they go through the small labyrinth. A mistake here, a little tap, a skid can be very costly. As a race driver said to me, the difference between racing cars and bobsledding is, in a car we can brake. In this, they're always going faster and faster and faster. And it's right at this point in the course that they are really reaching those faster speeds. Going into the Azura corner now, lining himself up for the Bianca turn, in perfectly, and out perfectly, straight as an arrow, nice and clean, going down to the David finish Richter is on a record-setting pace here. His time, 103.31. It is a new track record. His three-run time puts him in first place, 311.44. The East Germans still dominating this track. Their super high-tech sled has done the job again. And now at the top, this is Silvio Jobelina, Swiss number one driver. He only weighs 155 pounds. An enthusiastic start, but with his size, he cannot push quite as strong as some of the other drivers. But he gets an awful lot of help from those three men behind him, Greg, and he does have a very fast and good competitive start. Look at that, 552 as he goes into the Cristallo turn. And now, the setup for the ever-building speed. Out of the tunnel. Total concentration right here. All he's thinking of, attack the course and be absolutely precise. He's got to be very careful. He doesn't overdrive the sled or let the sled get away from him. He's doing just that. He's straight down the middle of those straightaways where the times are slow. Now approaching the big labyrinth turns in the lower half. He's really gaining speed and beginning to fly, Greg. Something else on Jobelina's mind. The Swiss have dominated the four-man championship since 1924. They've won it 14 times. He wants number 15, and he wants to take it from the East Germans. A nice kick out of the Bianca turn. Straight as an arrow going into the finish turn. He's really flying, Greg. Around the last curve, he'll finish in 103.61. It'll put him back into first place after three of four runs. About a tenth in front of Dayton of Richter. Bernard Lehmann of East Germany yet to come, though. And now his own teammate is challenging. This is Swiss number two, Ralph Pickler at the controls. And he was the 83 world two-man champion. A strong starting team. Let's take a look at the rhythm and timing as they get in the sled. The driver's already settled in. Number two, number three man, all nice and smooth. The fastest 50 meter start time on the lower left of your screen, 5.40. The time for Pickler's team, 5.45. Only 500 slower than the fastest, 700 faster than his teammate, Tobelina. Here on the upper half, where the times are slow, he's trying to drive through the bottoms of all these turns. Again, not trying to overdrive the sled, nor trying to let the sled get away from him, trying to keep it straight down those long straightaways. Now he's going into the Great Labyrinth, where he's picking up a lot of speed. Remember, this track is one mile long, 450-foot vertical drop, 17 curves. It's a challenge every inch of the way, and it's natural ice, which is rougher than the refrigerated ice at some tracks, like Lake Placid, for example. Lined up perfectly going into Bianca, out of the Bianca turn. Look at that, nice and straight, going down into that finished turn. Has a nice line through to finish turn. He's having a great time. 103.66, a good run, but about five tenths slower than he would have needed to take the lead. Three run time, 311.83. He's in third right now, but the man to beat is coming up, getting his sled ready, East Germany's Bernard Lehman. Milling about the track here at the World Four Man Bobsledding Championships in Chervinia. There's been a stop in the action, a terrible crash. Klaus Kopp of West Germany, here it was. Entered Bianca very nicely. Got off the turn late on his side. Now watch him as he goes through the finished turn. Hits that lip, does a complete pirouette in the air, comes down backwards. They did not finish the course, so they no, didn't no. get a time, but it made no difference here. They were happy to be alive. They had crashed through the retaining wall at the top of the Arrivo curve, brought down shards of wood, jammed into the sled. No one hurt, amazing. On their sides, going into the finish turn, as they start to climb to hit that lip, one of the pushers from the side must have gotten caught right here as the sled flips. All four men barely able to stay in the sled as they come down literally on their heads in the bottom of the corner. You can see the wood splinters flying all over and take a look at what the front and the side of that sled look like when they pull it out of the track. A 600-pound bob crushed like a child's plastic toy. But the race goes on again, and it's Bernard Lane at the top of East Germany. He must be thinking about something else as well. Another crash. The crash of Wolfgang Hoppe, gold medalist in the two and four man in Sarajevo, the best driver in the world. He went down in Azura Bianca. With Hoppe out, Lehman is the favorite, and he's still not afraid of Azura Bianca. I think, uh, 
dass diese Kurve sehr gut zu kommen hard, ist. Das ist nicht so schwierig, aber man muss sich darauf konzentrieren, wenn man diese Kurve nicht hat, dass man mehrmals hinuntergefahren ist, man sich selbst sicher wird, uh, dass man dann versucht, uh, den Kopf zu machen, wenn man seine Kollegen über den Kopf laufen lässt. Das darf man eigentlich this. nach Bianca nicht. Und ich habe nicht meine schnelle Kurvenpassage voll gesetzt. Denn wenn man in diesem Band mit viel Vertrauen geht, dann beginnt man zu machen Fehler. Und ich denke, dass mein Kollege das nicht mehr hat. An interesting thought, too much confidence he blames on Hoppe's crash. And they're off, they're third of four runs. A great starting team, Greg, the driver is in. Number two man tripped a little bit going in there. All in and underway. Lehman, a man of great experience, in 1976 won a gold medal, but he was the four-man brake man back then. We're looking at 1,389 pounds of men and machine as it hurtles down the side of this mountain. Right now in the upper labyrinth where the times are slow and he cannot afford to get into any skids or taps. And you can see he's handling that sled perfectly, holding it right straight down the middle. Now going into the grand labyrinth where the speed is all made up. At the second split, his time 2,200 is faster than anyone else. And now ahead works Azura Bianca. He is really flying, going into the Azura turn. This is going to line him up for the Bianca corner. Straight, clean, into Bianca. A beautiful line out of the Bianca turn. Look at him straight. Those little taps won't mean much. He's going much too fast. Through the finish line, 102.97. The first man ever to break the 103 barrier. No problem with Azura Bianca. And Bernard Lehman with a 310.4 for three runs is back in the lead again. The East Germans, extraordinary. So now the battle is for second place. Switzerland's Joe Bellina leading the East Germans by only 11 hundredths. The fourth run will decide it all. All four men are loaded in the sled. 1,389 pounds of men and machine again going through the Cristallo turn, that tunnel underneath the roadway in the upper half. Joe Bellina has been driving for 10 years. He is now 30, and he is representative of the new generation of Swiss drivers. Their best drivers in the past have been in their 40s. So, Paul, obviously, this is a game where experience plays a big role. And he has an experienced riding team behind him. If you'll notice the three men sitting behind him are tucked right in. They know exactly where they are all the way down the mountain and can help him in the turns if he gets off a turn late by throwing their weight up on it. Right now, coming off of Azura, entering Bianca. A nice line through Bianca. Look at how straight he managed to hold that sled in there. A little skid right there. That won't hurt him. He's moving so fast. And the finish. He will not break the 103 mark. His time, 103.48. It is his best run of the championship, though. And now at the top of the course, making his fourth and final run, it will be Bernard Lehman. He has been on a championship team, but he has never won the gold medal as a driver. Only as a brakeman, now is his chance. Look at the power of that snap, Greg, as they're getting off the top of the mountain. Lehman is in his position. Number two, number three. Brakeman gets in. Everything is all locked up before they even get into that first small turn. 5.45 start, a good competitive start. They're getting the most out of their sled, and this is the last year you will see this East German sled in competition. They introduced their high-tech hydraulics in 1977, but now they have been disallowed for next year because the other bobsledding nations say the East German sled is just too expensive for them to build. Next year, all teams will race on a sled, much like the Swiss have right now, and Paul, standardization will be an interesting equalizer. But right now, it is Lehman out in front. And he is flying through the great labyrinth in the lower half. He's going into the Azura turn, which will line him up for Bianca. Let's see how he holds it. Nice and clean out of Azura. Clean into Bianca. And a beautiful line going to the finish turn. He is really flying, Greg. A nice line through the finish. He breaks the finish beam at 85 miles per hour. His time, 103.66. An incredible four-run total. That is 21 seconds faster than in the world championships on this same track. 10 years ago. It seems first place is locked up. Dateliff Richter yet to come, but he could catch the Swiss, who are now in second. American team has had its difficulties in this four-man world championship. This was earlier, Greg, and Jeff Joe's team here gets a good snap out of the blocks, but unfortunately, when the brakeman changes his hand-gripping position, he loses the sled and has to run to catch up with it so that he can make it for the ride down. It seemed a little bit like the Keystone Cops. Too bad for Jeff Jost. He was fifth in Sarajevo, and actually, the start wasn't all that bad. Only three-tenths off the pace. The Americans finished 11th overall. 
But so far, there have been no mistakes by this man's team, Dateliff Richter, last year here at the World Cup competition. He was first in the two-man and in the four-man. He is a precision machine. And now he has to be quicker than 103.36 to take second place. They are off the final and fourth run. A good snap. And as you can see, the rhythm, all the legs are running together. Number two, number three man. Driver is already in. The brakeman gets in. Pulls down those two pushers. Underway again before they even get into that corner. 548, a great start. No wonder it is picture perfect. They train for months and months and months, almost a year-round training program for the East Germans to try to perpetuate their winning tradition. First and second in the four-man at Sarajevo. They have a chance to be first and second in the world championships here. Dateliff Richter at the control. And is that sled handling beautifully? Look at the aerodynamic design of that sled. It's no wonder they're so far ahead. He is really picking up speed now in this lower grade labyrinth. Richter must be faster than 103.36 to take second place away from Joe Bellina. Here he is in the Azura turn, lines himself up beautifully for the Bianca corner. Out of there, absolutely clean. A little tap right there, that won't slow him down. A beautiful line through the finish, nice and clean. And he is through 103.19. He will take second place away from the Swiss, and the East German control of this sport continues. First and second place, and Dateliff Richter, the silver medal, and he is proud of it. So here are the final standings. The top three within 75 hundredths of one another. And the East Germans have picked up their sixth world championship title in just eight years. Paul, your thoughts? Greg, as we watch the closing ceremonies, I can't help but think of the charge the Swiss made in trying to catch the East Germans. And I can't wait to see what will happen next year when they're all driving standardized equipment. Well, the sleds may be the same in 86, but will everyone else have the same discipline and great athletes that the East Germans have? We'll find out in 1986 when we bring you the four-man championships from Koenigsee, West Germany. But now, from the Matterhorn in Trevini, Italy, ciao for Paul Lamy.